Hello. Hello, good evening, teacher. Hi, good evening. How are you today? Hi, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I am very good in my day. Good in evening. Day. Thank you. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Elfie. Good evening, Byron. Good evening. Good evening. That's nice to see you here. Thank you for being on time as always. I know that is difficult because it is raining, but I'm happy that you're here. Todavía hay poquitos, but yes, I I may infer that some people is maybe having issues with the internet, but let's hope that they join the meeting after or later. So let me uh, present, I sent you the presentation of the section five uh, like an hour ago. But yes, we're going to finish section four today because there were a couple of exercises pending yesterday. So let me share the screen and maybe we can finish that while the rest is joining, right? So let me see. Okay, it's kind of slow. Okay, we have the word power and summer activities. Those are activities that may be um, used to describe things that we did in the past, right? So uh, for summer activities, we have these ones and they go and they can use with these verbs. Like for example, we have go and we have a list of activities and two of them matches the verb here on the left. For example, go, we, we cannot say go pictures, go a play. So, it is go hiking or go swimming and some other vocabulary related to school days. So we're going to watch the video and you may let me know if you have any questions. Hi everyone. In this class, you'll learn vocabulary for discussing summer activities. Let's listen and practice. Summer activities. Go hiking. Go swimming. Have fun. Have a picnic. Meet new people. Meet old friends. Play tennis. Play volleyball. See a movie. See a play. Take a class. Take pictures. Now, let's put these vocabulary words into practice. I would like for you to put these vocabulary words into practice by combining them with these verbs. Go, have, meet, play, see, take. For example, you can go hiking, you can go swimming. After that, I would like for you to think about the last time that you went to the movies, for example, and share your experience. Whenever you have finished, Share your work in our discussion forums. Well, you have that vocabulary in the presentation, but let's see if we can check here. Okay, this is what you just listened in the platform. So let's see if you recall this. For example, yes, get it's already done. What activities you remember that can be um, placed next to the verb go? Do you remember? What were those activities that were placed here? Go a trip. 
Mm, go a trip? I think. Go a club? No. Have a glass? With go? Go. Camping. Okay, go camping. And the other one? Go swimming. Go swimming. Let's check. Yes, that's correct. See, go camping and go swimming. Now, what about have? Do you remember the activities that go with have? A class. Have a class and the other option? Have a lunch. Uh, from this list? All friends. Have all friends. Mm -hmm. uh, remember me, the, me, me. Yes, yes. Uh, so activities. Uh -huh. So we said have a class. Have a picnic. Let's see. Vamos a ver. No, it was have fun and have a picnic. Para decirse divertirse es have fun. Have fun. And the other one, yes, is have a picnic. Now let's see the ones that go along with me. Old friends. Old friends. And the other one? Um, new people. New people. Okay, let me see. Yes, that is correct. Meet new people and meet new uh, old friends. Now play. Softball. Any. Play softball, play volleyball. Okay, that is correct. Play softball and play volleyball. And the last one, take. Take a class. Take a class and the other one. A trip. A trip. A trip. Uh -huh. Take a class and take a trip. Now, what was the activity that was suggested in the, um, in the video? En el video se sugería la actividad de um, poner, eh, recordar la última vez que hicimos estas actividades. Uh, for example, y, y ahí tendríamos que ir conjugando, esa es la idea de esto, conjugando el verbo en pasado. Uh, for example, I could say I took, I took a trip last year. I went swimming in February. I got a job last year, and so on. That's the idea. Uh, when was the last time that you did these activities? Can you say a couple of examples? Podrían hacer un po un par de ejemplos. With the same verb or the activities? Uh, so the, the verb and the activity, for example, I can say I took a trip last year. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I have a trip on the summer. Okay, good. I, I play. Video games. Okay, you play the video games. Um, weekend. Last weekend. Mm -hmm. On last weekend. Okay, good. Any other example? And I meet. I meet uh, or I met. I met. Yeah. Because it's in the past. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I met. 
uh, um, with all friends on my birthday. Oh, you met your old friends on your birthday. Yes. Good job. Any other volunteer? I watched I watched a movie last month. Oh, you watched a movie last month. Okay. Anybody else? I I read uh, the book in the last week. Okay, good. Now let's continue. I think that after that, the only thing that we were missing was the reading. So we're going to take a look to the reading and then we're going to see and discuss if we have any questions about vocabulary. After that, we're going to start the section number five. So let's watch the reading about weekend stories. Can you see my screen? See when la pantalla ahí? Yes, yes, teacher. Okay, good to know. So let me see if I'm sharing sound. Yes. I had an awful weekend. Hi, everyone. In this class, you'll develop skills in reading for main ideas and details. We'll do this by reading an article titled Weekend Stories. Weekend Stories Kelly I had a great weekend. I went to my best friend Helen's wedding. She got married at home. All her friends and family went. She looked fantastic. She wore a beautiful dress. After the ceremony, her parents served a wonderful meal. I'm really happy for her, and I really like her husband. Robert. I had an awful weekend. My friends and I went to a rock concert. I had a terrible time. It took three hours to drive there. I didn't like the music at all. And after the concert ended, our car broke down. I called my parents and they came and got us. We finally got home at 10 this morning. I am so tired. Erin. I had an interesting weekend. I went camping for the first time. My friends took me. We left on Saturday and drove to the campsite. First, we put up the tent. Then we built a fire, cooked dinner, and told stories. We got up early on Sunday and went fishing. I caught a fish. I didn't really like camping, but I learned a lot. We left on Saturday and drove to the campsite. Who had the words weekend? Who do you think had the words weekend? Quien tuvo el peor fin de semana? What do you think? Robert. 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 <laughs> yeah, poor Robert. Okay, and now that we listen the conversations or well, the stories, those are stories. Uh, do you have any question about vocabulary or pronunciation on this? No. 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 Okay, so with this, we finish the section number four, and we're going to move to the topics on section number five. I already sent you the presentation like an hour before class. So you may have it there in your WhatsApp. So we start with uh, statements with uh, bird B. This is the first topic that we have there. 
It's where were you born? Is the, the topic of the unit. El tema de la unidad es where were you born? Que es para preguntar a dónde naciste. Right? So, para preguntar a dónde es que hemos nacido, de dónde procedemos, se pregunta de esa manera. Uh, where were you born? Now, um, to continue with this, vamos a empezar por las oraciones afirmativas. Eh, y bueno, también vamos a ver cómo se forman las oraciones negativas con el pasado de be en la plataforma. Recuerden que el, el bueno, en verbo to be significa cero estar y cuando estamos hablando en presente lo conjugamos en am, is y are. En pasado solo conjugamos en, was y were. Ok. Um, ok, good. Uh, thank you for letting us know, Rosa. All right. So, entonces, dependiendo de la persona, usamos was o were. El significado es el mismo, cero estar, nada más que en pasado. Sí, yo quiero decir, um, eh, bueno, ya vamos a hacer las, los ejemplos. Vamos a ver. Ahorita, ¿cuándo usamos was? Cuando el sujeto es eh, I, he, she, it. Con esos sujetos, con esos pronombres, usaremos was. Si el sujeto es we, you, o they, usamos were. And we have a couple of examples here. I was tired last night. Si se fijan, yo estuve o yo estaba cansada ayer, anoche. I was tired last night. I was born in Australia. We were at home yesterday. You were in bed last night. They were late five days ago and he was ill last week. So we have those, those examples here about how to use the past of be siendo eh, siempre cero estar. Por ejemplo, yo digo, I was tired last night. Estoy diciendo, yo estaba. Estaba cansada anoche. Ok. Uh, ahora si sí decimos, um, yo... Um, Digamos que decimos, yo era un estudiante en el 2005. I was a student in 2005. Yo era, I was, I was a student in 2005. Soy siempre cero estar, nada más que en pasado. Y vamos a ver el video de cómo formar las oraciones afirmativas y negativas with the simple past of B. Aquí ya nos olvidamos del auxiliar did. Ya nos olvidamos. Ahora es nada más. The bird be was in where. Y vamos a ver cómo se usa también en oraciones. Let's see. It's loading, still loading. Okay, done. We get statement to pass of B. So let's watch the video. Hi everyone. In this class, you learn to form positive and negative statements using the past of B. Additionally, we'll practice a conversation which illustrates how this topic is used in a real life setting. Let's get started by listening to a conversation titled, I was born in Korea. Let's listen and practice. I was born in Korea. Where were you born, Melissa? I was born in Korea. Oh, so you weren't born in the US? No, I came here in 1999. Hmm, you were pretty young. Yes, I was only 17. Did you go to college right away? No, my English wasn't very good, so I took English classes for two years first. Well, your English is really good now. Thanks. 
Your English is pretty good too. Yeah, but I was born here. Let's take a look at the statements on this chart now. Statements with the past of B. I was born in Korea. I wasn't born in the U.S. You were pretty young. You weren't very old. She was 17. She wasn't in college. We were born in the same year. We weren't born in the same country. They were in Korea in 1998. They weren't in the U.S. in 1998. Contractions Wasn't equals was not. Weren't equals were not. We can follow this formula to form positive statements in the past with be. Subject plus was or where plus complement. We need to remember the following. For the pronouns you, we, and they, we will use where. And for the pronouns I, he, she, and it, we will use was. Now let's analyze a couple of examples. I was born in Korea. First we need to add a subject, I. Then we will use the verb to be in the past, was. Finally, we will include a complement, born in Korea. Let's do one more example. We were born in the same year. First, we need to add a subject, we. Then we will use the verb to be in the past, where. Finally, we will include a complement, born in the same year. Now, let's talk about making negative statements in the past with be. We can follow this formula to form negative statements in the past with be. Subject plus wasn't or weren't plus complement. Let's analyze a couple of negative examples. I wasn't born in the US. First we need to add a subject, I. Then we will use the verb to be in the past in its negative form, wasn't. I would like to point out that this is the same as saying was not, but we will typically use contractions. Finally, we include a complement, born in the US. Let's analyze one more example. They weren't in the U.S. in 1998. First, we need to add the subject they. Then we'll use the verb to be in the past in its negative form, weren't. I would like to point out that this is the same as saying were not. But we will typically use contractions. Finally, we include a complement. And the US in 1998. Now it's your turn to practice making positive and negative statements in the past with be about yourself, friends, and family. After you finish this activity, share your work in our discussion forums. All right, so Going little by little, we're going to start with the conversation. So let us practice a couple of times before going to the breakout rooms so you can do the practice uh, with your classmate. Give me one second. Okay, here you have the conversation is the same as the one in the platform, just with different drawings, but it's the same. I'm going to play the conversation twice so you can listen first and then repeat. I'm going to be pausing it for you to do so. 
Page 100, Exercise 2, Conversation I was born in South Korea. Listen and practice. Where were you born, Melissa? I was born in South Korea. Oh, so you weren't born in the U.S. No, I came here in 2005. Hmm, you were pretty young. Yeah, I was only 17. Did you go to college right away? No, my English wasn't very good, so I took English classes for two years. First. Well, your English is really good now. Thanks. Your English is pretty good, too. I hope so. I was born here. Page 100, Exercise 2, Conversation I was born in South Korea. Listen and practice. Where were you born, Melissa? I was born in South Korea. Oh, so you weren't born in the U.S. No, I came here in 2005. Hmm, you were pretty young. Yeah, I was only 17. Did you go to college right away? No. My English wasn't very good, so I took English classes for two years first. Well, your English is really good now. Thanks. Your English is pretty good, too. I hope so. I was born here. Well, that was the conversation. And uh, before we go to the breakout rooms, do you have any doubts or questions in regards to this conversation before we leave for breakout? I have a question. Yes. About, about the phrase right away. Oh, right away is like. What is in the mean? The meaning is like immediately. Um, okay. Did you go to college right away? Es como si inmediatamente fuiste al colegio. Ajá. Uh -huh. okay. A la universidad. Uh, yes. 
Yes. <laughs> it is confused for me. <laughs> yes, it is okay. confusing because it's similar to colegio en español, entonces lo asociamos con eso. Ah, <laughs> uh -huh. no, so, university. No. Yes, I, it's, I, I think so. <laughs> yes, it's the university is called college. There's a, mm -hmm. So okay. it says, Thank did you, you go to college right away? It's como fuiste a la universidad de inmediato. And so it says, mm -hmm. o sea, llegó allá, pero no se puso a estudiar de inmediato, sino que tuvo que tomar, tomar. clases de inglés por <laughs> dos sí. años. For por it. dos años. <laughs> Lo bueno yeah. es que estaba joven. Y yes, that's a good thing. And nowadays, uh, many, uh, well, yeah, different universities, I think, on different careers, they are. Um, Require for students to pass, I think that tough the TOEIC test to graduate. So yes, it's becoming very important. Uh -huh. yeah. My son is gonna be an engineer, and they uh, he is preparing for taking that test. <laughs> you know, so on you know, different careers, so it doesn't matter. So, but many of them um, um they are requesting for students to pass the, that exam. So it English is very important. That's um good for you to be practicing here. <laughs> As it is muy yes. important el inglés y que bueno que ustedes están yeah. pues. Ay, no les va a tocar ir dos años a la. <laughs> <laughs> ya, ya, ya llevan avanzadito okay. el camino. I yes. hope. <laughs> you hope so. <laughs> yes, you're going to be to pre-intermediate in the next module. Yes, Oscar? The toy test. I heard that is very complicated. What is it complicate? I don't know. Uh, oh, the so, test. The yeah, toy. Yeah, the test. Um, it's not that complicated um the one that is really hard is the TOEFL. oh yeah yeah TOEFL. the TOEFL, yes oh. i have taken the toic and it's not complicated uh and they have many many of those um of the items and the toic they are related to the good use of the simple present mm -hmm. But yeah, the, the TOEFL, that's for it. <laughs> yes. Mm. Yeah, for, I took a training for the TOEFL. And yes, it's very, it's very tough. It's, it's tough. <laughs> o sea, the teacher, o sea, hello. <laughs> no, we are required to. Si sí, nos lo piden para muchas cosas esos exámenes. Pero con el TOEFL solo tomé un training. Pero no he tenido necesidad de tomar el examen en sí, pero sí como, como unos mocks, como unos simulacros de TOEFL, ya los he tenido y, oh my God. <laughs> yes, it's a, but it's, it's, it's okay. It's more about culture and, and long readings. Tiene muchas lecturas y es bastante de la cultura de la historia de Estados Unidos, de los indios, de los, ah de la guerra, un montón de cosas. Por eso quizás es un poco más pesado porque hay que memorizar bastantes detalles. But, yes. But nothing that we cannot do. Podemos hacerlo. <ríe> si otros pueden, ¿por qué nosotros no? <ríe> ¿Verdad? Entonces, ¿tienen alguna otra pregunta antes de que vayamos a los breakouts a practicar esta conversación? Miss, en uh -huh. uh, four sentences, when say, uh, no, I came here in uh, 2005. I can use the, I was, no, I was come here in 2005. No, uh, I came es porque yo vine acá, yo vine acá. Entonces, acuérdense que el verbo be es cero estar, nada más que en pasado. Y lo mismo que aplica en En, no, no puedo tener dos verbos en pasado simple en la misma oración, right after, the, porque si no sería yo fui vine aquí, yo fui vine o yo estuve vine. Entonces ahí no puedo usar el verbo vi en esa oración, porque el que necesito es came y ya está ahí. Ok, thank you. 
You're welcome. Y eso es, ajá, lo que les iba a explicar más adelante, pero que bueno, Mario ya hizo la pregunta. Cuando tenemos el verbo cero estar en pasado, pues ese es el verbo de la oración. No, no le ponemos otro verbo ahí. Bueno, acabamos de ver el pasado simple con otros verbos regulares e irregulares que no son el be. Entonces, digamos que esta oración entraría en lo que vimos eh, hace unos días, en el past simple. I came here in 2005. Ok. Y si vemos el otro donde dice la edad. Uh, you were, aquí sí, porque es, dice tú eras. Tú eras bastante joven o tú estabas bastante joven. You were pretty young. Entonces ahí sí, porque cero estar, pero si se fijan, este es el verbo y ya no pongo otro ahí. So, no podemos poner dos verbos en el mismo tiempo gramatical juntos, a no ser que el otro sea un auxiliar o se puedan separar con un infinitive o un ing form. Any other question? No more questions? Okay, so let's create the breakout rooms so that you can practice this conversation. Y sí, vamos, vamos a practicar esta conversación que es la misma que estaba en la plataforma y la tienen en su presentación del PowerPoint que les mandé como un poquito antes de las ocho. Ahí veo menos. Será por la lluvia. Okay, let's join the rooms and practice. I am shocked. Okay. Melissa. Okay. Uh, where were you born, Melissa? I was born in South Korea. Oh, so you were born in the USA? No, I came here in two, uh, six, seven, five. To those, the sun fight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm, you were pretty young. Yeah, I was only 17. Did you go to college right away? No, my English wife, very good. Wasn't, wasn't very good. Very good. See, so I. I do English. I took. I took. I took. I took. English. I took. Took. Uh huh. English. English. A class for two year first. First. Yeah, okay. first. First. Es como okay. eh, well, uh -huh. first. First. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, Excellent. your English is really good now. Okay. Uh, Thanks, your, your English is very good. Two. Two. Pretty. I, pretty, okay. Uh -huh. I, pretty. So I was born here. Okay. Okay, Next. change. Thanks. I, Melissa, and you, Shok. Start. Okay. Henry. Yes. Yes. Now you are Chuck. Repeat. Where were you born, Melissa? Melissa. Okay. Uh, You're Chuck. Okay. Ahora usted okay. es Chuck. 
Okay. <laughs> uh, where were you born, Melissa? I was born in South Korea. Oh, so you were born in, in the US? In the US. In the US, okay. No, I came here 2005. Mm, you were very young? Yeah, I was only 17. Did you go, did you go to going right away? College. College, pardon. Uh -huh. College. College. Right away. Right away. Eso se puede unir. Primero digamos right, Henry. Right. Uh -huh. Away, sí. Right away. Did you go to go to go to right? Right away. Right away, right away. Okay. Excellent, right away, right, right away. Right away. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Oh. No, my English wasn't very good. So I took English classes for two years first. Well, why would your English is already good now? Thanks, your English is pretty, pretty good too. I hope so. I hope so. Why the board here? Okay. Okay. And the next participate. Who want to practice? Oh, oh. So you were born in the USA? No, I came here in two hands five. Mm, you were pretty young. Yeah, I was only 17. Did you go to college right away? No, my English wasn't very good. So I took English class for two years first. Well, well, your English is really good now. Thanks. Your English is pretty good too. I hope so. I was born here. Next. Okay, um, before you continue, is there any um, word that you may find difficult? ¿Hay algo que estén encontrando difícil pronunciar? El año. Ah, el año. 2005. 2000. Excellent. Uh -huh. 2005. Okay, thank uh -huh. you. Solo, solo en esa forma se puede decir, ¿verdad? No, you can say 2005. 2005. 2005. 2005. Ajá, igual, o sea, los años sí los puede dividir en dos cifras. Por ejemplo, si usted quiere decir 1995, puede decir 1995. Oh. Teacher, igual en la, en la primera frase, where, where, where. ¿Cómo sería en, si la, esa pronunciación? Uh, where, where. Casi no se nota la diferencia. Where, where. where were you born? Uh -huh. where Excellent. Were you born? Where were you born, Melissa? Ok. Uh -huh. And then, remember, it's South Korea. Es la, el país. Korea. No. Korea. Uh -huh. South Korea. And yes, is there any other? Hay alguna otra? Um, siento que también podría ser difícil la de college right away. College uh -huh. right away. Right away. Uh -huh. Right college away. College right away. College. Mm. Right away. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So you say, did you go to college right away? Did, did you, you go, go to college go? right away? Mm -hmm. Did you go to college right away? Mm -hmm. So okay. you can continue practicing. Okay. Thank you, teacher. You're Cesar, welcome. si quiere, si quiere lo hacemos nosotros, Cesar. Lo que falta su leima también, si no. No, Suleima creo que lo hizo conmigo, ¿verdad, Suleima? Sí, con, con usted. Creo que solo falta César. Falta Byron. 
No, sí. yo ya estoy. No, Byron eh. lo hizo con Manuel. Ajá, pero acuérdense que, bueno, lo importante es que participen todos Ajá. y si pueden repetirlo es mejor. César, es nos falta. Okay. Si gusta, lo hacemos, César. Perfecto. Vale. Yeah. Where were you born, Melissa? I was born in South Korea. Oh, so you weren't born in the U.S. Okay, let's uh, let's go to uh, Do you like question, uh, Christian? Okay, permit me. Sería diferente a él. Ahorita están preguntando de, sobre dónde nacimos. Bob. Where were you born? Uh -huh. uh, okay. Cambiamos el verbo y, y sería una pregunta diferente. Mm. Siempre con, siempre incluiría was. Eh, was o where? Sería... Mm. Was, eh, quiero ver, where, quiero ver. Te voy a poner la imagen para que, para que no uh -huh. te en serio, where, 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 where you study, eh, Mario, estaría correcta esa pregunta. Eh, literalmente diría, ¿dónde, eh, ¿Dónde estudiaste? ¿Dónde tú estudiaste? Ajá. Where, 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 where to study sería. No, where, where you study. You study. Ajá. Where, where you study. Acuérdense lo que les dije. Si es el verbo where, sería ser o estar. Y luego ah. estar y entonces sería dónde estuviste estudiar o dónde estuviste estudió. Entonces, uh, no se ponen juntos eh, eh, lo, en el mismo tiempo verbal. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. En este, ¿Cómo, formula, ¿Cómo podríamos formular este caso? En este caso sería, where did you study? Uh -huh. Ajá, yes. tiene que llevar el auxiliar did. Por eso, bueno, eso fue lo que vimos la semana pasada y todavía estos días anteriores. Haciendo preguntas y oraciones con los demás verbos que no eran el verbo be. Porque es como que son dos cosas que no se mezclan. Uh -huh. okay. Yo le voy a explicar más de esto. Uh -huh. Creo que okay. sería mañana. Mañana vamos a hacer la diferencia en esto. Pero ahorita pues practicamos la conversación y ya vamos a ir al tema de las uh, oraciones. Statements. Ok. La conversación ya, ya, ya estuvo. Sí, bueno, ya hay que retornar. Ok, have a nice day, have a nice, have a nice day, day now. Hello, Oscar Aguirre. Hey, how you been, man? How, how's it going? Fine. Uh, you know where I can buy the gas the ship? Can you repeat because I, I can, I can where hear I, you so clear. <laughs> where uh, do you know where are a uh, gas station with a uh, Oh, yes. today, today, today I didn't go. No. No, no, no. Where do you fold your bus or your out? Where do you fold the tank of your Oh, car? my, my pickup is full with, let's see, 20, 20 gallons. Yeah, but where? Where, where do you recommend? Uh, okay, where, oh, where, I, re 
Oh, I recommended the DLC station. Really? Yeah, because this is a good gas. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I use this because eh, nunca lo, 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 lo he usado. Es, es la... Mucha gente no okay. sabe. Tengo, amigos, tengo dos amigos que trabajan en el Ministerio de Economía y me recomiendan que el octanaje de DLC después de Texaco es la mejor que hay. Ah, bueno, saberlo. Oh, sorry, okay. teacher. Está bien. Thank you. No, I know that you're, you're excited with that topic. Yeah, todos estamos preocupados con eso, ¿verdad? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Ya casi llegó a los cinco dólares, ¿verdad? Casi. Sí, y muchos no problema. saben, muchos no saben, pero DLC es una buena gasolinera. Hecha. Aún para amor. Se supone, según pruebas, La 1 de Texaco y DLC es el mismo canal. No, es que tal vez no es por tanaje, sino que por la, la, la pureza del combustible. Uno no sirve, Puma tampoco, y solo DLC y Texaco. That's it. <laughs> ok. Thank you for the information, guys. So, Only car o, o también para motocicleta. The same thing. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, thank you for the tips. So, let's continue here. Hmm. Let's see. Here we have only sentences or statement with the simple past of B. Uh, si se fijan, pues acá tenemos la primera diferencia con lo que estuvimos viendo la semana pasada y estos días atrás. Eh, con uh, aquí no vamos a usar otro verbo que no sea was y were para no entrar en confusión porque um, con los demás verbos que no sean ser o estar ahorita estamos con was were fue o estuvo fui o estuve etcétera eh, ese es el verbo de la oración si se fijan uh, I was born here you were pretty young she was 17. We were at the hair salon. They were born in Chile. No vemos otro verbo acá, ¿verdad? Porque estamos practicando nada más cero estar en pasado. Eh, decir, tú eras o, o tú estabas bastante joven. You were pretty young. Tú estabas o tú eras. Um, we were, nosotros estábamos o, uh, o estuvimos at the hair salon, okay? Now, for negative, aquí está lo, lo otro que les decía, otra diferencia, eh, con los demás verbos que no son cero estar, digamos, estudiar, jugar, bailar, cocinar, etcétera. Cuando vamos a hacer una oración negativa, usamos un auxiliar, ¿verdad? ¿Cuál era? ¿Lo recuerdan? Para oraciones negativas, en pasado, con los verbos regulares. Didn't, didn't, didn't. Ajá, didn't o did not. Y el verbo pues, de la oración lo usábamos en presente simple, right? So, en este caso, si se fijan, no está el didn't, ni hay otro verbo, sino que siempre es was, were, y solo agregamos not, que contractado es wasn't. Para was not y weren't para were not. Ok, aquí no hay didn't, ni hay otro verbo. Son como, como el, el verbo vi se independiza tanto en, en simple present como simple past. No se combina con otros verbos ni, ni utiliza auxiliar, sino que el mismo eh, tiene su, su manera sin auxiliar. Por ejemplo, ven ahí con las oraciones negativas y lo mismo es en pregunta. Cuando vayan a hacer preguntas con was, were, no usan did ni tampoco se usan otros verbos. Eh, lo vamos a explicar más a detalle y lo vamos a practicar más mañana. Por ahorita nos vamos a quedar nada más con las oraciones en afirmativo y negativo con verb, que sería was y were, depending, right? 
Eh, la estructura es la misma, tanto en oración afirmativa como negativa. La única diferencia es que después de was o were, vamos a agregar not. ¿Ok? Para hacer una oración eh, negativa. Si se fijan acá, dice we were at the hair salon. Estuvimos en el salón. We weren't at the café. No estuvimos en el café. Okay. So it's pretty simple. It's not complicated. So let's try to complete this exercise uh, using the options that you have in parentheses. This is a short paragraph in which Melissa is talking about her family. And we have to choose the correct verb form, the one that are in parentheses. And then we're going to check as a whole group. The first one is already done for you. It says my family and I. Okay. Y dice where, ¿por qué? Porque estoy hablando de mi familia y yo. Okay, eso es un nosotros, ¿verdad? Sí. Y con we, nosotros usamos where. where. Entonces, esta es la correcta. My family and I were all born in South Korea. Y ahí seguimos leyendo y seleccionando la respuesta correcta de las que están en paréntesis. Les voy a dar unos minutitos para que lo completen. Lo pueden hacer en su cuaderno, ya sea que escriban todo si son o solo las respuestas. Tenemos unos cuantos minutos para completar este ejercicio acá en la sección principal. Okay, I'm going to stop where you find a period and then someone else going to continue. Let's see, my family and I were all born in South Korea. 
we weren't born in the U.S. Oscar? Yes. We weren't. We weren't. Yes, I was born in the U.S. In the U.S., I was born in the city of I'm joined. I was born, yes, I was born in the city of Egypt. Egypt. Uh huh. And my brother. And my, and my brother. My brother, brother what? was. Was. Yes. Was born there. Too. My brother was born there too. Uh, can continue? My parents? Me. My parents weren't. Born in Ipsum. Thank you so much. Alguien más que continue? They. They were, uh, were born in Picapi South. Uh -huh. Thank so, you so much. They were born in the capital. So, Laura. Hola. My father was a businessman and my mother was a teacher. Yes, that is correct. Excellent job, everybody. So uh, you can, like an extra exercise, you can do a paragraph similar to this one about you and your family. And you can share it if you want in the that can be in the WhatsApp or the in discussion box after the video. So that would be it for today. Antes que se me caiga el internet otra vez porque está lloviendo. <laughs> so I hope that you sleep well and see you tomorrow. Okay, bye. Good, good <laughs> Take night, care. Everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Sleep well. Yeah. Good night, guys. Nice. See you tomorrow. See you. Bye. Aquí a la otra vez la teacher. Sí.